Hi Tubies, here's Alexandra and today we are talking about 90s miniature painting. Why? Well, because uh, recently there is a resurgent of uh, 90s miniature nostalgia on YouTube happening. I see that uh, all over the place on channels like Ninjon, Broadsword Wargaming, uh, Stealthy or uh, MS Paints or um, there's even uh, one called uh, Goblin Green Base or something like that. And, uh, <clears throat> well, you see painting tutorials on how to paint uh, in the 90s style, painting with old uh, paint uh, uh, ranges, recreating old paint ranges by uh, crushing down old paint pots that are dried up and uh, refilling them with water and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, let's talk about, a little bit, about nostalgia. And, uh, also a little bit about, uh, how it was back then, living in that days. Because I did it. I lived this days. Well, <clears throat> back in the days, uh, GW uh, started, uh, with those paint jobs here. Those are the, uh first uh, images of uh, the heavy metal team in the heavy metal style. <clears throat> you have here uh, the good old ultramarines with the uh, ultramarine blue armor with edge highlights and uh, bold colors, flame patterns on the uh, missile launcher, bright red uh, bolt guns and stuff. And here you have uh, Deathwing Terminators with their uh, Bone armor with the bright highlights on the edges. Here you have uh, corn armies with uh, orange highlights all over the place. Yeah, those were the humble beginnings of uh, the uh, 90s painting style. Here you see the blood angels uh, with their uh, bright colors here with the um, blood red armor with the blood angels red highlights. Also, uh, well, the 90s Tyranids with a uh, Screamer Killer Carnifex, the funky uh, Tyranid Warriors, and uh, the Gene Stealers that uh, have nearly unchanged uh, survived until this day. Uh, yeah, those were uh, the good old days, uh, like they uh, tried to call them. But were it all sunshine and rainbows back then? It definitely was not. Imagine a time where there is no internet. There are no forum posts, no Reddit threads, no YouTube videos, no nothing that can teach you how to paint. The only way you can learn how to paint is looking at those images here and uh, figuring it out for yourself. Sometimes you uh, walk into your local uh, games workshop store Hobby stores don't exist, only Games Workshop stores. And uh, the only thing they teach you there is, uh, well, base coat it with a brush, then put a wash on it and dry brush it. Done. There is no fancy techniques, there are no fancy hobby products like contrast paints or technical paints or high pigmentation paints or nobody even used an airbrush. Imagine living in those days and then the paints you're forced to use, your only paint range that were accessible for you was the GW paints. And those were horrible. Yes, there is a bit nostalgia about the paint pots. I even live them, you see. I still use the 90s paint pots uh, from G Games Workshop because I really, really love them. They are great. They are the best paint pots in the world because they seal perfectly. If I don't open this bottle, it will still be usable paint in the year 2053. I guarantee you that. <clears throat> but let's not uh, diverge into uh, that. The uh, paints themselves, the GW paint range, 
was not great. It was terrible, in fact. There were only four paints that were decently usable. There was Deadly Nightshade. It was a very, very dark blue. Um, it had a bad coverage, like every paint in the range. But it was looking really nice if you uh, mixed it with white, if you highlight with it. You can uh, actually see the uh, color here used on the uh, Jean Steelers. This is Deadly Nightshade highlighted with blue. Uh, with white. <clears throat> so, um, then the second paint was Crimson Gore. It was a very dark red tone, uh, kind of similar to this tone here. It was a, a burgundy red. And it was the only red that had a, that had a decent covering ability over white and or black. So uh, it was basically the base coat color for all red paint schemes. But it was much darker than uh, what you see here on the cover. <clears throat> then uh, the third paint uh, that was uh, decently usable was Bleached Bone. It was the only beige color that you had. And uh, it was the base coat for all skulls and bone and uh, stuff. Um, like all uh, cream based paints like uh, here for example uh, a skeleton bone here from army painter or uh, nowadays uh, race bone or however you want to uh, call your bone colors um, they had a relatively good coverage ability but um, it's, it's always felt a little bit chalky and then uh, the last good paint uh, was uh, regal blue it was uh, a mixture between uh, the Deadly Nightshade and Ultramarine Blue. This was Regal Blue. And uh, yeah, it had a, a relatively good coverage ability, but uh, mm -hmm, yeah, it was a mixed bag. Let's say it. Let's leave it at, at that. Then you had uh, some washes. You had some uh, really good washes, two in fact. There was um, uh, null, uh, not null oil, it was black wash. <clears throat> and then there was flash wash. Those were the only two washes that were decently usable. Flash wash, I used it for basically all my uh, um, skeletons uh, that I painted back in the days. But uh, in hindsight, it had a, a very uh, bad sediment problem. It uh, um, always had this... Um, this grayish white uh, sediment at the bottom when you sh you really had to shake it really good to uh, be workable and the black wash was uh, stainy to uh, say it at least nowadays the uh, flow improvers in the paints uh, really help the uh, washes to go into the recesses but it was basically uh, a liquid a liquid coffee stain then you had chestnut ink uh, that is, yeah, also very stainy. Had a weird color with a reddish tone in it. I didn't like it. Um, yeah, those were uh, the only really usable paints. The yellows in the range were terrible. The coverage, you, you had one tiny little black dot on your miniature. You could never cover it with yellow. Never. It doesn't matter how many coats you go over it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it was ba basically unusable if you don't undercoat it uh, with white. The white in the paint range was also terrible. Well, let's just say it out loud. The paint range of the 90 Citadel paints was super terrible. But it was what we had to work with. And uh, now we come to uh, this painting style, the Iffy Metal painting style. Well, why did it not, uh, well, branch out and uh, cover the entire world and you see every army painted that way? Because nobody paints that way. Really nobody. Outside the Iffy Metal team, nobody uses it. And why is that? Because it is pain to paint like this. It takes hours and hours and hours of painstakingly uh, working with your miniatures. 
Let's have a, a really close look at those uh, miniatures, how they are painted. So, uh, you have here your uh, blood angels. Yeah, they look uh, nice and tidy and neat. But back in the day, when this was painted, it took at least five coats of red paint just to have um, the uh, decent enough coverage over white um, that the armor is just red. There were no airbrushes in use. There were no rattle cans with a, a spray color uh, available to us. It was just white spray paint, black spray paint, and that's it. And trying to paint red over black, it was impossible. Basically impossible. So, you base coat it in white, and then try to paint it in red. After five coats, you had a decent red coat. And then you start to apply the shades. With a, a tiny brush you uh, paint darker lines into uh, all the recesses and shade, shade it like that. You wouldn't use a wash. Hell no, definitely not. Because it would stain the entire miniature like hell. Like crazy. Like I said before, the um, um, the flow improvers in inside their, uh, their washers. There were no flow improvers. This was just water and pigments and done. This was the wash back then. And uh, yeah, so you painstakingly uh, paint all the, um, uh, all the uh, recess shading into there. And as you can see, there is barely none. It is a, a process that is barely even visible on the miniature. And then you highlight the miniature. And uh, if you look closely here, for example, uh, this Terminator here, the uh, edge highlights there, you have a, um, an area around the edge of the miniature that is maybe two millimeters wide. And there you have a wet blending from uh, the edge of the red to the uh, edge of the uh, miniature that is wet blended. It takes hours and it's painstakingly to do. And then you uh, paint after the wet blend two other edge highlights over there. A thick one and then a thin one. So, um, yesterday I watched a video uh, where one uh, painted an, uh, a relatively uh, new Terminator in a Blood Angel color scheme with a 90s paint scheme. And he said... Uh, it took him 40 hours for uh, this one miniature to paint. And, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely believe him. Here, with the wet blending, you can uh, definitely see that better here on the Space Wolves. Here on the Terminators, maybe. Or here on uh, Ragnar Blackman. You see the uh, super uh, fading around the, um, around the boots. Uh, there, you see this uh, super fine color transition. This is wet blending. And uh, why is nobody uh, feeding an entire army of this? Why this paint scheme has never uh, uh, been painted outside the Eva Metal team? Well, it takes forever and nobody paints like that. And nobody teaches it, teaches it to you. Every Games Workshop uh, employee didn't know how to paint that. The only thing that uh, was taught to us, because I worked at uh, this time period at Games Workshop, and the only thing that was taught to us was uh, make a quick base coat, give it a black wash, highlight a uh, normal uh, base coat again, but leave the, uh, uh, the recesses uh, in the dark shade, and then an edge highlight, and done. But this is not uh, the heavy metal uh, painting style. This is the uh, Games Workshop uh, store painting style. And the only other thing uh, that they taught us was dry brushing for furs and stuff. And that's it. And there was no one out there that could teach us. Yeah. That's why this never uh, took off. And uh, yeah, there's a, a lot of nostalgia around uh, those miniatures and uh, the painting schemes and uh, the people look into their uh, army books or their Codex Imperialis here or <clears throat> um, 
some other old uh, publications from Games Workshop and they reminisce and uh, reminisce about uh, this uh, very nostalgic uh, back in the days uh, painting style and they wish they could paint like that nowadays. Yeah, nowadays you can. You have paint that uh, covers really well. You have uh, base paints. You have contrast paints that uh, make a really, really nice uh, base coat. Like, for example, Bar Red. You can uh, tint a white model with a contrast paint Bar Red and it's basically a f almost flawless red. Or you can uh, use an airbrush to uh, use your uh, flawless reds. And nowadays you can paint like that. But back in the day, no one would ever do this. <clears throat> no one would. Yeah. Those are my two cents uh, into uh, the uh, backwards um, time machine. And, uh, well, I hope you like this little ramble. Uh, click the like button to help me out. This uh, helps appease the uh, um, YouTube algorithm gods. And, uh, well, we see us in the next video. You're Alexandra. Bye.